Hello, Wonder Hussy here, just driving along through the beautiful, wide open middle of nowhere, headed to check out something interesting I had pinned on my map. But as I was driving along, I passed something else interesting. An abandoned ranch. Okay, you know I like exploring places like these, especially ones that also have creepy old trailers on site. And well, poking around the buildings and trying to come up with a story about what might have happened to the people who used to live here. I just have to poke around. So let's do a quick job and see what's... Oh, wow, look at this. I mean, I barely started looking and I already found something interesting. There's this old barn, which you wouldn't think there'd be anything interesting in the old barn. You know, usually there's just a few old pieces of tack and some tools. But look here. <gasps> a dirt bike. Oh my God, yikes, it doesn't look that old. I mean, doesn't that look like it's been ridden? Well, maybe not. Look at the seat. The seat's all eaten up. Golly, I don't know anything about dirt bikes. I guess maybe looking at this, <laughs> maybe it hasn't been ridden in a while. I don't know. I don't know dirt bikes, but isn't that a pretty nice bike? What do you think, bike guys? I know there's got to be some bike guys watching this channel. Okay, so somebody lived here that enjoyed dirt biking. And dare I say it might have been the same person who enjoyed drinking Keystone Light. I feel like those two might go together like peanut butter and jelly. Dirt bikes and Keystone Light? Mmm, call me crazy. But I mean, especially when there's a Mountain Dew involved. I don't know, man. Dirt bikes, Keystone Light, and Mountain Dew make me think there's a pretty good possibility that somebody named Kyle once lived here. Okay, that was just the very first building and there's a whole bunch of buildings. Obviously, I'm most excited to go in the main ranch house because you know I love stuff like that. We'll go in all these buildings. I'm not going to spend too much time poking around the grounds because, well, you know, it's just old corrals and there's a, what do you call that, a cattle chute for when they load the cows into the trucks to take them to the slaughterhouse, I guess, or the feedlot and then the slaughterhouse or the auction. Whatever the case, this was obviously a cattle ranch. Okay, a cattle ranch. And was the rancher's son possibly named Kyle? Hmm. And then look over here. There's this really old cabin with a huge, really cool dead tree next to it. So could this have been the original ranch house? You know, this could have been one of those scenarios where some pioneers came out here, because this is pioneer country where we're at, you know? These vast plains out here. Folks came from hundreds and thousands of miles away to get fresh farmland out here. And, well, maybe some immigrants, emigrants came out here and settled this ranch way before all those other buildings were built. Yeah, look at this. This is cool. Sounds like the pendulum of time swinging. Time waits for no one, including the poor pioneer settlers who first came here and built this humble cabin. Uh, unfortunately, looks like the roof has collapsed in but there's some pretty interesting evidence like okay so it had a bare wooden threshold but it had some pretty groovy linoleum on the floor at one time oh i was gonna guess that was an oven but oh maybe it was just a real narrow little two burner stove really kind of groovy wallpaper like that wallpaper it's like fern leaves to me that looks kind of almost 1970s and i guess well that linoleum there could be from the 70s too Oh, look, there's wallpaper here next to the door. It's kind of a really interesting pattern. I don't know. You know, on closer inspection, this cabin looks like somebody might have lived here relatively recently. I, I mean, I was originally thinking 1800s. Now I'm thinking more maybe 1940s, 1950s. Huh. So maybe the settlers came out here in the 1940s. Now, I don't know. This cabin could have been built way back in the day and then well, maybe Kyle lived in there. Maybe he was the, the obstreperous son of this hardworking, you know, this family, they'd been here for generations working this, this ranch and they were good, God-fearing folk. You know, they went to church on Sunday. They observed the Lord's Day. Mom baked bread, canned all her own jams and jellies. Dad was out there working the fields, you know, tending to the cattle. But they had this son who all he wanted to do was drink beer and ride his dirt bike and... Well, maybe his grades started suffering and so to punish him, they made him go live out in the old uh, ancestor's shack. Uh, just a theory. Now there is this creepy trailer, which I was assuming would have been like some kind of security guards thing, 
But, I mean, this place isn't even fenced off, so I guess there was no security guard. I'll try to check in the trailer in a minute, but first let's just check out a couple outbuildings over here. I mean, this was a working cattle ranch, so they had lots of farm buildings. Oh, goodness, what's this? Why are these barrels over this? Oh, this almost looks like something you would, like, lay a saddle over to work on it. Oh, look. A shelf here with a mysterious bottle on it. What could this be? I mean, doesn't that look like the kind of lid that you stick a needle through? Oh my god, look, yeah, it says something about cow's abortions. Cow's abortions? Yikes! What were they doing here? Oh, look, down here. Here's some old barbed wire. And the reason I'm even bothering to point it out is I got an email from somebody who said, uh, or who asked that next time I'm exploring a place like this and I come across some old barbed wire that I should zoom in on the barbs because apparently I didn't realize this there's barbed wire collectors and all the different there's different types of barbed wire and the way the barbs are twisted and some old barbed wire can be very uh, uh, Valuable like as a collector's item who'd have thought okay, mr. Barbed wire. Here's your close-up. Are you ready for your close-up? Is that a valuable barb? I mean, to me, this just looks like a pretty standard issue barbed wire, but what do I know? I mean, look at these cool old weathered buildings. I mean, this wood must be worth a ton of money to fancy New Yorkers and people who like to build their coffee tables out of it. Oh, look on the, on the stoop. It says Sean O'Sullivan. Oh, so Kyle's first name was actually Sean. His name was probably Sean Kyle O'Sullivan. <laughs> now we know. Well, let's look inside this building. Oh, this is empty. Nothing in here. Really cool old boxes on the wall, though. Look at that. They use that for insulation. I bet it gets real cold up here in the winter. So that was a box of California oranges, tomato soup, Lucky Lager. Anybody uh, out here remember drinking Lucky Lager uh, in an 11 ounce stubby? <laughs> uh, how fun. It says it was one of the world's finest beers, if you can read upside down. Oh, maybe they're not lying. I don't know. I'm not a beer drinker. Okay, then there is some uh, kind of like graffiti on the wall. Oh, goodness. Look, it's like the names of all the people who worked here. Don Hill was the boss. Charlotte Hill was the cook. Hugh Cahill was the boss. George Cahill was a writer. Tim O'Sullivan, that's the guy whose name we just saw. He was a writer. Michael Sullivan was a writer. Jim Robinson was a Rango. Con Cahill was a writer. Lee Gates, Acti Camp. Al Minerup and Joe Minerup were Buttes. Lauren Meeker and Alma Meeker were Sage Hen. M. Hamburger and Ray Blassingame. What is this? I don't know. It was all written here in the summer of 1969, though. How about that? That is wild to think that could be the last time anybody was in here was... 1969 and that sounds like real cowboys like this was a real working ranch and these 1969 gosh you weren't even like a hundred years out of the frontier at that point so there were still plenty of active working cowboys back then so tim o'sullivan i'm sorry i'm joking around about your name being kyle he was obviously a fine fellow and an actual cowpoke uh-oh it's an old newspaper i promise i won't spend too long looking at it but oh my god Build Your Own series stirs Portlanders. Oh, it's like a Portland, Oregon newspaper. Well, that makes sense. I'll be honest, we are in Oregon, although we're real far from Portland. Oh my goodness, what year is this from? Look at these women. Like their outfits, their hair. This has to be a really old newspaper. Oh my goodness. Yeah, look, Portland theater schedules. Maybe we can tell by what movies we're playing, what year it was. Ivan the Terrible, Please Don't Eat the Daisies. Oh, wasn't that a Doris Day movie? So that's like 60s. I bet this was a 60s paper. No date on it anywhere. Oh my goodness. Well, there's another page of it over here. Maybe it'll say over here what year it was. Let's see. Oh yeah, look. Sunday Oregonian. Sunday, May 1st, 1960. Oh my goodness, it's barely the 60s. Early, early 60s. How exciting. Look at this. Khrushchev can catch up with Can Can in Paris. Oh, yeah, look, there's an ad for that movie. Playing at the Broadway. Dora's Day. Please don't eat the daisies. Museum friends to hear talk by Vincent Price. Oh, how about that? <laughs> look at this. Mrs. Richard Charles Thompson. The good old days when a woman went by her husband's name. Now, those were the days. You know, none of this. 
working women nonsense. Okay, well, as much as I'd like to take these old papers with me, I'm just gonna tuck them under here, just like they were, so that if some other explorer comes by, they get to have as much fun looking at them as I did, because that was cool. But I did promise you I wouldn't spend all day looking at the old papers, so let's go back outside. Now it's, now it's interesting seeing that Sean O'Sullivan thing, now that we know he was a cowboy here on this lonely ranch on the edge of nowhere. Okay, well, if the Cowboys were here in 1969, this trailer looks way newer than 1969. So somebody must have been living here long after the Cowboys left. Let's see if we can get in. Oh yeah, we sure can. Oh my God, but it's so filthy. I don't know if that I want to go in. Look at that. There's like, I don't know what that is. Hey, rabbit turds. Oh, hold on, there's a newspaper or a magazine down here. What's this? Oh, it's People in Espanol. Look at Shakira, beautiful Shakira. What year was this? Diciembre 2008. So gosh, only about 13 years ago. Okay, so some Hispanic ranch hand was probably living in here. Oh my gosh, look in this trailer. I'm gonna go in here. I'm just gonna try not to breathe. <laughs> Oh my, oh look, here's an English people. So maybe they just like gossip. Oh my God, yeah, look, it's from when Michael Jackson died, 2009. There's his kids, oh my God, Paris and uh, Prince. Oh, where's Blanket? Uh -huh. You know how his youngest child was named Blanket? That was, I think his legal name and he's adorable. Oh my God, if you look him up nowadays, he grew up to be a very handsome uh, young man. He's cute, cute as all get out. And I remember him at that funeral, it was terrible. He was so young and, there he was on blast. On, you, look, here's a picture of him. Look, that's Blanket. Look how cute he is. But look at Paris. What a good big sister. I mean, by all accounts, say what you will about Michael Jackson. He was supposed to have been a very good dad to his kids. Okay, enough about that. Let's look around this trailer. Okay, lots to look at in here. So we're going to have to move quickly. Uh, okay, obviously somebody was living in here. Somebody who worked on the ranch because there's their uh, winter mucking boots. We're going out to mucking out the stalls. Probably another... Oh, Schwann's Frozen Foods. It's a company that will deliver frozen foods. I don't know if they deliver way out here, but I don't know where else you would get your groceries because we're way out there. Manuel, Manuel del Conductor de Oregon. Oh, so it's a driver's manual for Oregon. Yeah, definitely some Hispanic people were living in here. I, I just lift up this old Pendleton. Look, there's an old tennis shoe. Look, it's a Spanish tabloid. Oh my God, I love tabloids. Mira, that means look. Swayze se está consumiendo. Oh, that's when he was dying of pancreatic cancer. It's just terrible. I mean, some of the curtains and stuff, the wallpaper is still up. It's kind of nice, but oh God, the whole floor is covered in this sawdust and poo. And oh my goodness. I don't even think it's worth going. Well, you never know. This could be where that dead body is that I'm always trying to find. Wah, wah. God, I feel compelled to check like every door in here just to see, you know, where's that one major exciting discovery is going to be. Maybe in here. Oh, here's a glove. Maybe this is the gloves he wore when he was giving the cows the abortificants. Oh my God. Yikes. Huh. Okay. So what I take from this trailer is maybe there was a Hispanic couple, I'm going to guess, because all the gossip magazines and the shoes were clearly those of a man. So maybe a Hispanic dude and his wife lived out here at the very end, trying to make this ranch work after the original family left. Or maybe they were hired to be uh, security guards and keep an eye on the place. After, maybe, you know, maybe the original family just eventually got tired of ranching. Ranching's a hard life. And they wanted to move to the big city and enjoy some creature comforts, finally. You know, Kyle expressed no interest in taking over the ranch. So uh, maybe they just hired these Hispanic people to sort of keep an eye on the property until they were able to sell it and then for whatever reason they were never able to sell it. Gosh, I don't know. What I do know is there's still three more buildings we have to go in. The main ranch house, that little shack, and then this really old trailer. Let's just check out the trailer first. I mean this is a really, I mean is this like a homemade trailer? Look at it. The way it's all nailed together. Was this even like commercially manufactured? Oh, maybe. And was it a dwelling trailer or was this just storage work? I mean, it almost looks like it was more of a work trailer, you know, like doesn't, there's no furniture or anything in here. It kind of looks like a toaster. 
Okay, now before we go in the main house, let's go in this spooky little shack. <laughs> this chair sitting in the doorway. My goodness, doesn't this look like something straight out of uh, Dorothea Lange or Walker Evans? You know those uh, photographers that did those uh, iconic black and white photos of Okies in the Dust Bowl back in the 1930s? This looks like it's... I mean, this could have been Merle Haggard's house. Merle Haggard was an Okie, little known fact. His family, uh, he grew up in Bakersfield because his family were Okies and they went out to work the fields. And gosh, I think they even lived in a boxcar in like one of those migrant camps. They were very poor. And then you know what happened after that? He turned 21 in prison doing life without parole. Just kidding, he went on to become an internationally famous music star. That's what happened, he made good. Okay, let's see if we can get up in this cabin. Oh, there's a basement under. Let's go in the basement first. It's a root cellar. A good old fashioned root cellar where the people used to keep their canned goods and such, you know, cause it's, oh, it's noticeably cooler down here. Wow, like by at least 10 degrees. Kind of reminds me of my submarine back in Death Valley. Uh, if you're not familiar with my channel and you heard me say my submarine back in Death Valley, you're probably wondering who the hell is this and why are you watching her video? This is amazing down here. This is so old. It's a real old root cellar. The shelves built in, stone rock walls. You know, it's built right into the ground. This is a screened in cabinet and I'll bet you anything, that's where they stored like, I don't know, milk or butter, eggs, stuff that they didn't want flies to get on. That's why it's screened in. Isn't that how they used to do it? I mean, you tell me, I didn't grow up on a farm. I just, I've just seen all this stuff in movies and read about it in books, but that's what it looks like to me and that is, that's pretty cool. These giant nails driven into the uh, support beam here to hang, I don't know, bags of onions, whatever else they stored down here. And look at the door. The door is fascinating. I know you're probably like, oh God, just go into the house already. But no, look how neat the door is. Like this hinge, the way it closes, the way it's like lined in a really old canvas. I guess that's insulation, like weatherproofing to keep, so that when you closed it, yeah, look, the jam also has that same canvas nailed on it. It's like, oh, it's an old fire hose. I think that's an old flattened fire hose. Uh, that was, to, I guess, to weatherproof it. And then you would pull that door closed and seal it real tight. And that way, uh, the food would stay nice and cool in there. Dust wouldn't get in there. Critters wouldn't get in there. All your food would be safe. Okay, let's see if we can go upstairs. Uh, these stairs are real busted. Oh gosh, it's real windy out here. Sorry if the audio is getting messed up. I think we can still make it up these stairs. We just gotta be real careful. Yep, we're good. Oh, there's nothing in here anyways. I mean, it's just a one room shack. I don't know what it would have been. And then it has this really cool old, old chair. This chair looks like it probably dates to the era that those cowboys and ranch hands were working here, 1969. I mean, that's vinyl upholstery. Didn't a lot of you have chairs like that in your kitchen back in 1969? Look at the old circuit breaker cover. Wow. Oh. But that's all that's in here. There is nothing else left to indicate to us what this building might have been. I mean, it was wired for electricity, so I was gonna at first guess maybe it was just more food storage, like dry goods storage. But why would it have been wired for electricity? Well, maybe it just had a overhead light. I don't see a light. Ah, uh, who knows? Maybe Granny lived out there. That was Granny's little. You know, maybe they did. Granny used to live out back in that uh, first old homesteader's cabin that we went in but they wanted her closer to the main house so they could keep an eye on her. And you know, besides they wanted to exile Kyle to that shack. So maybe Granny, this was like, Granny could pretend like she was still living. Well, maybe Granny was an Oki, you know? And she, she preferred to stay in a humble cabin like that. She was just more comfortable. Gosh, who can say? Okay, we finally arrived at the final act and that is the main farmhouse. Let's go in here and see if we can finally put together a story of who lived here and what happened. I mean, this looks like a two-story cabin, so it should be pretty big in here. Oh God, yikes. Okay, so I think the door I came into, well, this must've been the kitchen, I guess, even though there's a box spring on the floor, because there's a like a pantry cupboard, there's a walk-in pantry here, and then the floor is covered in uh, pretty cool linoleum. It looks to me kind of 1950s, maybe even 1940s, pretty old. The whole thing is blue. It's all blue motif. Uh, this looks like it, well, this looks like it was a closet. So maybe this, well, I suppose there could be a closet in the kitchen to hang your, your coat and stuff when you come in. 
could just sort of be an entryway. I guess I can kind of see that. Like there's the front door, you walk in, there would have been like a little kitchen table off to the side. Well, no, hold on a minute, because this room here is was very clearly the kitchen. Remember, there was two doors up front, so the other door comes in here. Kitchen cupboard, drawer. Mm, nothing in it except for... Oh, look, the cupboard opens into the other room. It's two-sided. Oh, maybe that was like a butler's pantry or something back there. Oh, look how fancy inside the drawer used to be before nature took back over. It, had, uh, it was lined with paper. You know, somebody took some care here. Oh, and look at this. So this we're looking at a kind of like the, I guess, the kitchen counter. That's where the sink was. You can see there's the drain board. And then under the sink, you know, that's probably where they had their cleaning supplies, their garbage can, whatever. Oh, look, there's matching linoleum down there. I don't know if you can see. It matches that shelf paper. But then look at this. This was like a big bin that pulled out. Was that like where they stored potatoes or something? Every single one of these drawers is lined with that same paper. How sad. I mean, I'll bet this place was really nice back in its day. Oh my goodness, look, there's the stairs going up to the second floor. Oh my god. I don't think I've ever been more excited to go up a creepy old staircase in my life. But before we go up there, things are pretty creepy downstairs too. Old creepy old metal bed frame. And I know it's just a bed frame. Why is that creepy? I don't know. You tell me that. Does that look creepy or does that not look creepy? To me, that looks pretty creepy. Really nice. Well, I was gonna say really nice windows, but that window is just all cockamamie, but it was nice. You know, those really cool kinds with a bunch of different panes of glass. You know, look at that. Lots of light in this room. Lots of mud swallows in this room. Uh, oh, it looks like they had a cat. There's a cat scratching post, aw. Okay, and then there's another room back here that has a really boss Formica table. Look at that. If you cleaned that table up, I bet that table's worth money. You know what I mean? Look at the detail on that. And the yellow, oh God. If I wasn't traveling around for another <laughs> three weeks with no room in my car, I would take that table. Well, actually I wouldn't because you know I don't like to take things that don't belong to me in these places. Look at the linoleum in here. It's like one of those linoleum rugs. It's me meant to look like a carpet, but it's just linoleum. Isn't that wild? The colors are still so vibrant. Look at how bright the carpet is down here under the stairs. Wow. Okay, you guys ready to go up this creepy staircase? Cause I know I am, look at that. Woo wee, <laughs> steep stairs going up to who knows what. Uh, like I said, I've rarely been this excited, okay. Anything behind the door? No, okay. No killers? Stairs are solid. Oh, so I don't know if this is like a full second story. It seems like the ceilings are pretty low up here. So maybe just like the kids, maybe this is where Kyle <laughs> lived. <laughs> <laughs> before they exiled him to the shed. Okay, we just got to the top of the stairs, and like I said, it's a low ceilinged room. I can stand up in it, but I'm only 5'3", so I guess, yeah, this would be the kind of room that you would like, would be like the kids, the teenager's room. Uh, obviously, somebody was sleeping up here. And look, there was that big tree outside, probably came right up to this window. And you know what that means, like when Kyle lived up here, he was always like sneaking out of the house to go party, and he would climb out the window, climb down the tree, so his parents who were sleeping downstairs wouldn't know. I'll bet you anything, that's exactly what happened. Okay, this part of the roof here, or attic, excuse me, it was just storage. I got kind of spooked because I stepped on this one part of the floor and it kind of gave a little bit. We better get out of here. This whole whole house might collapse any minute. Interesting how it's screened in around the staircase. I wonder why they did that. Okay, then there's kind of like another bedroom upstairs. So maybe there were two kids. Maybe they had a son and a daughter. And she had one side and he had the other. So maybe the daughter was the good girl. You know, she went on to, to school, to college. Maybe she became an equine veterinarian. You know, now she moved to Kentucky, to Lexington, to horse country. You know, now she works uh, with Bob Baffert at the Kentucky Derby. But Kyle, well, as previously discussed, Kyle was no good. You know, maybe, well, Kyle wouldn't have been born yet when those ranch hands were here. Well, maybe some of the ranch hands were still hanging on around here when Kyle was born. And he used to hang out with the ranch hands and, you know, they would drink beer and they'd, they'd give him a beer even when he was underage. Like, don't tell your parents. And they would all tell, tell stories about how it was back in the old days when the, you know, the West was still the West and a man was still a man. And Kyle just loved, he ate those stories up. He wasn't interested in going to school like his sister. He didn't want science, math. He just wanted to ride horse and, you know, fix fence and 
go out on the range and all those cowboy things. Or excuse me, mend fence. You don't fix fence. Oh, such a city girl. You know what's interesting too? I don't see any electrical outlets in this house. I just realized that. There's no electricity in here. So whoever lived here either did so before the advent of electricity or just was living really rough. Oh, well, there's an electric light fixture on the ceiling here. So I guess there was electricity. Oh, there's an outlet. Okay, so there's at least one outlet in here. Not many though. Is there any in this room? No, no electricity in here. But this was obviously the parents' bedroom because there's their closet. Okay, so I'm gonna stick with my theory that it was an old pioneer family that came out here and settled this homestead way back in, oh gosh, you know, like the 1880s or something. And they did well, they prospered, you know. Beef was good, cat, you know, lots of stuff out here for the cows to eat and drink. And when Ma and Pa, uh, who originally settled the place, got too old, well, Pa probably, Pa unfortunately died of a heart attack one day when he was out uh, rounding up the cattle. Uh, but Ma lived on uh, and the oldest son and his wife took over the house. And Ma continued to live here at first in her original little shed as previously theorized. They moved her into that cabin so she could be closer to them. And then unfortunately, well, Kyle, problem Kyle, ended up moving into Granny's old place. And the worst part about being sent off into Granny's old place was that there's no indoor plumbing. Although now that I think about it, there was no indoor plumbing in the main house either. They all had to use this outhouse. Oh my God, we better just check it out. Look at this side of this outhouse. That's fancy. That's like hammered, what do you call that? Hammered tin, like those ceiling tiles you see? Really neat. Substantial, I know nothing's gonna blow this outhouse over. Oh my goodness, okay. Well, there's actually some interesting stuff in this outhouse for once. There's a bag of lime. I guess you dump that on top of your poo to help it decompose. But look on the wall. There's poetry. There's stuff to read while you're doing your business. So here's something called The Three Bears by Robert William Service. Ma tried to wash her garden slacks but couldn't get them clean. And so she thought she'd soak them in a bucket of benzene. Well, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but then there's one here. I wanted to die in the desert. I planned it for many a year. Alone with my God and my conscience, and not a sky pilot near. Oh my God, sky pilot. That's what they call the uh, chaplains in the military. You know that awesome Eric Burden and the animals. Sky pilot, how high can you fly? You'll never, ever, ever reach the sky. Okay, here's another one. Riding by Charles Badger Clark. There are some that like the city, grass that's curried smooth and green, theaters and strangling collars, wagons run by gasoline. But for me, it's hoss and saddle every day without a change and the desert sun a blazing on a hundred miles of range. Okay, anyway, I've spent long enough in this outhouse without reading all of those poems. I'm sure they're awesome and I'm sure they all have funny twist endings and golly, if I didn't mind my videos being over an hour long, I'd read each and every one of them in full to all of you, but well, unfortunately, people like short videos nowadays, and this video is already 10 times too long, so I'll just shut up now and say that, well, I know my theory about Kyle doesn't really make sense chronologically. Like if they grandparents moved out here in the 1800s, Kyle would have been born in like the 1940s or something. And, well, he would have been off to World War II and not riding a dirt bike and drinking Keystone Light. But maybe that's like Kyle, the third, you know, maybe that's like several generations removed from the old ranch house. Uh, son of Kyle, son of son of Kyle, started coming out here. You know, he knew his grandparents had long ago abandoned the ranch, left it to that Hispanic couple in the trailer. Well, maybe, you know, just like Kyle used to like to hang out with the old ranch hands and drink beer. Well, son of son of Kyle also had that in his blood. You know, he used to go sit in that outhouse and read those poems and it really stirred something in him, you know? He wanted to ride the range. He didn't want to be in the city with those gas-powered wagons and the strangling collars. He wanted to be out here where a man can be a man, only instead of riding a horse, he rode a dirt bike. Now, why did he leave his dirt bike out here? Uh-oh, I think I just found the answer. Whippets. That's definitely what happened. Okay, Kyle, grew up on the ranch, you know, he was a rural kid, active in the 
4-H club and the FFA, riding his dirt bike, drinking beers, you know, got into some trouble, but nothing his dad couldn't uh, shake out of him with a good strapping. But then uh, one day, well, his parents wanted him to go to college and he wasn't into it, like we said, but uh, his parents sent him up to, uh, to Eugene, okay? Uh, he was gonna go to college in Eugene, Oregon. And when he got up there, well, there happened to be, it happened to be right around the time of the Oregon Country Fair. If you've ever heard of that, it's a big like hippie festival. And well, he ended up getting sucked into that scene. And next thing you know, he started following the Grateful Dead. Okay, he became a deadhead. <laughs> Never thought it would happen to him. Nice farm kid riding his dirt bike. He just put his dirt bike in that barn to keep it safe. Uh, you know, while he was uh, going to school, he planned to come back on school break and ride his dirt bike around and drink beer and do all the same stuff. But then he got sucked into this deadhead scene. and. Well, that changed everything, you know. Next thing you know, Kyle just up and left the ranch, left everything he ever knew to go traveling around following the Grateful Dead. And you know, some say when the wind is just right and you stand at just the right angle, you can hear the faint strains of scarlet begonias coming out of the little transistor radio in Kyle's Kyle's little shack out back. Oh gosh, I don't know. I have no idea what happened to the people at this ranch, but gosh, if Kyle did leave the ranch life to go become a deadhead and his sister became a high-toned equine veterinarian at the Derby, well, more power to him. I'm happy they grew up to be successful. I'm just sorry that the old family ranch ended up in the condition it's in today because I, for one, can see the potential of how beautiful this place must have been.